All right, welcome y'all. I'm excited to introduce you to today's guest. Alongside co-host Bianca Leger, we interview a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu purple belt and coach from Austin, Texas, training under Gabe Turtle and representing 10th Planet Austin. She is a 2021 IBJJF world champion and an F2W fight to win 115 pound champion. Welcome to the winner's circle, Lauren Sears. Hi, thank you. Welcome, Lauren. We're so, so happy to have you. <laughs> As well. I'm happy to be here. Happy to, to talk and get to know you guys a little better too. Heck yeah. Absolutely. So we're kind of talking before I uh, hit record about kind of the goal of this podcast. It's to really uplift, inspire, and empower everyone tuning in um, to your hero's journey story that we're going to go over. And it's to empower them with greater faith um, on their hero journey ahead. So this is a really positive conversation. The first question starts as such, and that is, Lauren Sears, what do you love about your world right here and now? Oh man, um, <laughs> that's, a, that's a broad question because there's, there's so much that I love about it. Um, I love that um, I'm living the life that I've always dreamed of. Um, I, I am surrounded by people that are constantly challenging me and pushing me and that support each other in every avenue of life, whether it's on the mats doing jujitsu or um, outside of it. Um, I love that I wake up every morning and I'm excited to start my day and um, do the things that I love most and that, that my work is uh, what I love to do most. Um, so I guess that's a, a roundabout way of, of saying what I love most about my life right now. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a, that's a great answer. So let's give us a visualization of, what the, of the, what's this dream life of yours look like? What does life look like for you today? Um, well, I, I get to jujitsu every day. Um, it's my passion. Um, I get to, um, work with people hands-on and not only through the sport, but also as a, a leader, uh, a motivator, a mentor, um, just helping uplift people and bring them into their, their, uh, highest power. Um, it's one of the things that I, I've always loved most. I've, I've always loved teaching. I've loved coaching and helping people to, to grow. Um, and I get to do that every day through jujitsu as an instructor, um, but also um, as a competitor. So uh, not only do I love like the teaching, the leading side of things, but I also love the, the doing, the, the, the sport itself. I, I've always been uh, a very like, kinesthetic person. Um, I, I don't like sitting still. Um, I can't do a desk job. I could never do something like that, but, um, I've always been, um, athletically inclined and, um, I fell in love with jujitsu and, uh, I get to go out there and challenge myself and push myself and learn new things about myself every day. And, uh, learning and growing is something that's very important to me. And jujitsu allows me to do that in multiple different ways. Um, internally and externally, physically. Um, it allows me to meet and connect with, with so many different people. Um, and, uh, you know, it's an ever evolving sport and there's so many, it's, it's so complex that, you know, I, it's, it's something that I'm never going to like fully master. Like even when you reach, you know, that black belt level, like you're always learning and you're always growing. Mm -hmm. And, um, I just, I really love that, that I get to wake up every day and do something that I love and share it with other people and, um, you know, and just, uh, keep working in that direction. And I kind of feel like I, um, I've separated myself from, uh, the things in, in the world and life that, um, are, are ugly. Like I just focus on the things that make me happy and, uh, the positive things in life and, um, so I'm kind of, you know, focused on um, what's in my world and, and that keeps, brings me a lot of peace. Um, so yeah, that's pretty that much it. Powerful. That's so powerful. The, mm, what I hear in this is the focus because I can only imagine what it's like to show up every day and continue to push yourself 
but to also like shut off all the noise from outside so that you keep doing your thing. That's like really something to look up to that kind of discipline that gets you moving forward because you're like constantly focused on the direction you're taking. That's really awesome. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. So as a competitor, um, some huge wins of yours, some huge celebrations are your uh, 2021 IBJJF Nogi World Champion. You're also um, a fight to win 115-pound champion. Two huge accomplishments. Congratulations. So that's from the competition side that you've been on. And you are also a coach at the gym you started, and that is 10th Planet Austin. That's where you've begun your jujitsu journey. So just tell us about what you're coaching there um, currently and how are you how are you enjoying um, that new that new journey that you're on of coaching um, um, versus being a, just a competitor. Competitor, yeah. Um, and like I said before, like I love teaching. Um, I was a personal trainer for years before um, I ever got into jiu-jitsu and um, I, I've worked with kids, I've worked with adults, um, I coached kids swimming. So um, teaching and coaching kind of is something that um, um, I have a lot of experience in and it's something I enjoy. And um, so starting coaching in jujitsu, it, it really is, it's helped me grow as an athlete as well. So it's not just like me, um, sharing like and, and helping lead other people I'm, I'm learning through helping other people learn as well mm-hmm. so um you know I'm, I'm most of the time I'm sharing like uh whatever um I'm currently working on myself because that's where I'm going to be most inspired to put the most like uh like energy and, and, and time into like really like studying in depth uh, whatever technique that is and understanding it and I'm you know something that I'm I'm excited about, I'm going to be able to convey and share that more clearly um, with other people. But um, yeah, the way I, I kind of run my classes is I, I like to um, share a technique, but I always like to do a live positional, um, some sort of like live work within the class. I think that that's very, very important. Um, we can learn steps and processes, but um, within those live reps, there's going to be small nuances and uh, micro adjustments that are going to have to be made and figured out um, that you can only get through live reps. So I think that uh, live work is very, very important. And I like to incorporate that into just about every one of my classes. Mm -hmm. And who are you teaching? Who are you coaching? Um, Ages, gender? Yeah, like what kind of classes are you teaching now? Um, It's it's all ages, all gender. I mean, uh, like, you know, it's adult classes, but sometimes like kids will be a part of that. Um, I've covered gyms at 10 or sorry, um, classes at 10 Planet Austin. And usually those are larger times there'll be classes or uh, kids right, within that class. And but right now I'm, I'm actually teaching at a location that's outside of 10 Planet Austin. All 10 Planet members are welcome to come there. But that's because we're opening up a gym in Oak Hill at the end of this year. And so we're kind of trying to uh, get exposure to the classes in a more Southwest location. Um, so right now the people that are in my class, um, I think the youngest guy I have is like 17 and then I've got, you know, adults. Um, but yeah, it's all, all ages. Um, yeah. Mm, Right on. So it's amazing how you're sharing your passion for jujitsu with these new beginners, these new people. So let's trace things back. Let's examine your journey to jujitsu how did jujitsu come into your life? And we could even go back um, to how you were an athlete growing up or start wherever you want, but let's trace your journey to jujitsu. All right. Um, yeah, so like I said, I've always been athletically inclined when I was younger. Um, so from like five to nine years old, I was on a swim team um, and I, I used to race in swimming. Um, and then outside of uh, that, like I was in all kinds of sports when I was in high school. I tried a little bit of everything, um, basketball, volleyball, track. Um, I used to ride horses. I grew up riding horses and training them as well. Um, so yeah, I've, I've always been like, I like to stay active. I like to stay busy and uh, try new things. And um, so 
martial arts was another one of those things. Um, I was a personal trainer at the time and um, I was doing uh, Olympic lifting and powerlifting. And um, I decided that, you know, I wanted to learn how, how to defend myself, just basic self-defense. And um, I started out in Krav Maga and um, it's an Israeli martial art. And uh, I, I, at the time there was also a, a Muay Thai class that was going on there. And so I decided to give that a try at one point and I really started to fall in love with the sport aspect of it. Um, I started martial arts because I wanted to learn how to defend myself um, if I was ever in a dangerous situation and then I just started f falling in love with the art of it and um, did Muay Thai uh, for a bit and then um, kind of got into MMA. And I, I really, I started uh, thinking about wanting to fight in MMA. So I was training in that for about three years and I realized that, you know, if, if I was gonna fight, I needed to learn how um, to defend myself if I was to go to the ground and I didn't have any, in, really any groundwork. Um, and the MMA classes, sometimes we would go to the ground and work some very, very basic, uh, techniques, but it, it really, it really wasn't much. And so I decided if that's the route I was wanting to do, like I would need to really commit to learning, um, some ground game. And so one year I just, I decided that um, I was going to commit at least a year to it because I already had, at that point I had three years of MMA under my belt. So I had about three years of striking. And um, so I, I actually signed up for the On It World Open before I ever did my first jujitsu class. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> I did, I did my first triathlon like that. So um, I think I earlier when you were talking about like my when I was talking about like my, uh, my sport history, I completely like forgot to mention that, but I did triathlon professionally for a while. Um, and that was right before I got into martial arts. Um, the whole reason I got into martial arts is I rolled my ankle really bad, uh, right before, uh, Olympic trials. And, um, I, yeah, I still went out and went to Olympic trials in jujitsu or sorry, <laughs> in triathlon. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't perform well because, you know, my ankle was all banged up. I could barely even jog, but I still went out and did it. And then after that, um, you know, I took some time away from triathlon and then tried martial arts and then it went from there. But anyways, um, yeah, so I signed up for my first uh, jujitsu competition before I ever took my first class because I kept telling myself, all right, you're going to go do, go work on your jujitsu, go work on your ground game. And I just kept putting it off, kept putting it off. And then um, I was like, all right, I'm just going to do what I did with triathlon. You sign up and you're not backing out. So either you go train and you start to prepare for it, or you're going to show up there on the day and have zero training. So I, I signed up for it and I actually ended up getting like two or three weeks of training before the competition, went and did it. And I didn't expect to win or, or you know, be able to pull anything off, but I was just like, I just want to survive. And um, I did that in my weight division. So I ended up like, I lost, but it was like by points. And then, um, it, I had also signed up for the absolute division. So then I ended up fighting this girl who'd been training for three years and she converted me. <laughs> uh, it was fun. Yeah. Um, I forget the question, but I think you're asking me like, how did I get in the leading up? Yeah. yeah your, your journey, your journey to jitsu. So then, yeah, you yeah. signed up on it open. Um, you survived, you made your goal, you survived your first match, you, you went into absolute. So for those not, un not knowing what that means, absolute means all weight division, any weight, um, mm -hmm. open, open division. You went against a girl that was training for three years. <laughs> Unfortunately, you got into a shoulder, yeah. a long Kimura. And um, yeah, and so now, and then how did that evolve? So you started and then how did it evolve? How did, once you got your foot in that door, how did that evolve? Yeah. So, you know, I had told myself I was going to commit a year for jujitsu so that I could fight in MMA. And even just a couple weeks into it, I just felt really connected to the sport. I felt really connected to the people and the community and I just fell in love with it. And, um, I never went back. I just kept training. And, um, I actually like after that competition, um, 
I think it, it was, it was in training. Um, I tore both my hip flexors and my left rhomboid. Um, and so then I was out for like a year, but, and, uh, so like with healing those injuries and if I had, if I had known how to properly heal them, I could have been back probably before like a year, but I ended up being gone for a year, but I kept okay. the thing in my mind. I was like, I got to get back. I got to heal so I can get back to jujitsu. And, um, and so, yeah, I just, I fell in love with it and I never went back and I just, um, I got obsessed with it. I kept showing up every day and it was all I could think about. I even like, I, was applying to physical therapy school and I found jujitsu probably about like mm, six months before I got accepted into the program and when I got accepted into the program I, it was like one of those things that like I had worked so hard for so long and sacrificed so much to just get accepted into the program and when I got that acceptance letter I was like yes oh <laughs> I was like also almost like oh man but I, I want to keep doing jujitsu and I know like how, how tough this program is going to be. And I almost thought about like just dropping out of school because I just wanted to do jujitsu. And, um, I talked to several people and, and made the decision to finish school. And so those two years while I was in school, I, I didn't get to train much. It was maybe like twice a week. Um, but I, I still, I was there like, and I would be in the gym and I worked the front desk for, for a while, like while I was in school, um, Curtis, um, the coaches really helped me out so I could continue coming into the gym. Cause I was going to school from 6.00 AM until, you know, like six, seven o'clock at night. And then I'd have to be studying. And it was just, um, it was, it was a lot for two years. Um, but yeah, I just, I just kept coming back and I was in love with it. So, um, just kept showing up and mm -hmm. competing as much as I could when I could. So if I got a break from school, if there was like, a week break I was in the gym like from morning until night I'd go to like four or five classes and uh sign up for a competition like that uh, like the winter break like a month long um I would just be training like all month as much as I could and go to as many competitions as I could wow okay what so what go ahead Bianca I was curious what keeps you what keeps you showing up every single time? What keeps you so focused to go back in there? Like your heart is in it. There's obviously something about it that lights you up. You've got this beautiful community that's pushing you to grow. You see yourself evolve, but can you kind of identify what is it about that that lights you up? You, you could have picked anything. What is it about that sport? What is it about that experience for you? Yeah. What are you doing? So like I said, like I've tried so many different sports um, and nothing really spoke to me and touched me the way that jujitsu does. Um, it's a very unique, it's very special um, type of sport to where it, it, you, you can't do it alone. Like you have to have a partner, you have to have somebody else who's engaging with you. And it's very much, I see it almost like a dance. Like um, it's, it's very, um, like, yeah, it's, we're, we're, uh, being rough and we're trying to get joint locks and we're trying to chip each other out, but, um, it's very much, um, a, a social thing, uh, for me as well. Like, I really, I love the community. I love like that. It allows me to fulfill so many different, um, um, avenues and, 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 uh, things that, that I need, um, whether it's like social whether it's like traveling and meeting new people, learning something new, um, being creative, creativity, um, the, the, um, the physical outlet. Um, it's, it's the, the constantly learning is something that's huge for me. Like I, I love being creative and I love learning and it's, it's just like this ongoing, never ending puzzle. It's really, it's, it's human chess. So you know, and, and every game is going to be different with each person. So it's always something new. And I'm always learning something new, whether it's about the sport, it's about a technique, or it's about myself. And um, that piece of it is, is one of the largest pieces for me, because is learning about myself and growing internally, as much internally as I do externally, um, as, as an athlete. Um, so much of this sport is, is mental. I mean, that can be said about many sports, but 
um, you don't have to be highly athletic um, in order to be really good at the sport. It's very much like a mental game. Um, and uh, that, that internal growth and exploration is something that I, I always, I've always craved. Um, I was really interested in psychology. I almost went to school for psychology. And this is a sport that really teaches you a lot about yourself. And it really helps you dig inside and, and uh, work through whatever, whatever struggles you have or whatever past trauma that you've had. It really helps you, um, um, it, it brings those things to light and it helps you face those things. And it helps you um, become, grow like um, as much internally that, um, so that when you face these kinds of things out in the real world, um, it's, they're easier to handle because you've already um, had to become comfortable being uncomfortable in, in a live scenario. So it's, it's that like internal and like mental and emotional growth that is, is really, um, it really draws me. Well, mm -hmm. thanks. I get it better now. <laughs> Yeah, so that's one great lesson is learning how to find comfort in the discomfort is the lesson you've learned from jujitsu. What are some other lessons that you've learned about life or about yourself that you've learned um, through jujitsu that you've incorporated into your being now? Um, and there's so many. Um, yeah, like, um, Sometimes when I'm put on the spot like that, my mind goes blank. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's like, okay. There's so many, and now I can't remember any of them. <laughs> it's always like that. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. One, that, one that I've learned from jujitsu is problem solving. Um, yeah. That's been a that's been a huge a huge mm -hmm. one. Um, in addition to that, staying calm in the storm, like you said. So those are so those are two of mine. Um, exactly. Yeah, I, I would agree with you there for sure, for sure. Um, yeah, I think that also for me personally, um, believing in myself and um, not being afraid to go after the things that are meaningful to me and, um, and to just take that leap um, on the mats, practicing that in jujitsu and in competition helps me practice that in my, the rest of my life. Um, so, uh, yeah, like I've, uh, I've always like, it's, it's, it's a funny thing because I've always had, like, I've always been a confident person. Um, and I've always like just jumped at things that, that are exciting or that interest me, but at the same time, I've always struggled with self-doubt. And I honestly, I mean, I think that's true for, for all of us. Um, I haven't spoke to a single athlete who's a competitor, who's, uh, even like at the highest levels who go out there and they don't struggle with, um, you know, with anxiety or doubt, but, um, learning how to manage that and, and, uh, that the anxiety in itself and, um, um, empower myself and find, be able to find that, that, um, that strength and, and belief and empowerment, um, through jujitsu helps me in all other avenues of life. Mm -hmm. So uh, being a woman, um, what have you learned about self-defense on being able to defend yourself against really anyone out there now? Um, how, how has that knowledge from jujitsu transferred into just your knowing that you can keep yourself safe? Um, so that's that self-defense piece and then also just the self-confidence which you said you've always had but how yeah how has jujitsu helped your self-confidence and your self-defense or how have you seen jujitsu help others that you know self-confidence self-defense self-esteem yeah so um you know one thing about um self-defense and having the confidence of being uh, confident in your training is that it isn't just when you're having to use it. Um, that translates through like the energy that you um, put off and the way you carry yourself. So um, just knowing that you've had training and having confidence in your skill set is going to help you carry yourself um, uh, um, more upright through life. And uh, that in itself is going to make you 
less of a victim towards other people. And so oftentimes, like just having that confidence that you know how to defend yourself, um, that can help diffuse a situation before something ever even occurs. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, it's really important to me um, to share uh, jujitsu in just for, for that purpose, to, to help people build confidence and um, within themselves that if they're ever in a situation that um, they're gonna be able to defend themselves uh, far better than they would if they had no training. Um, and then that alone, having that confidence is gonna help them avoid a situation altogether. Because you can, you know, even being able to deescalate a situation verbally before it becomes physically, sometimes like if you're able to just speak up for yourself, um, outside of just the energy and the aura that you put off, like being able to speak up for yourself because you know that if it turns into something that you'll, you'll be able to handle it. And I think that having the confidence in your training is key because um, that's going to help build that. Yeah, that's powerful. You're also a big believer in competition. So let's talk about the role competition has played in um, your growth as a jujitsu um, practitioner, athlete, coach. Um, yeah, let's hear about what inspired you to. Yeah, you said you you registered. That's how you got into jujitsu. You registered for a competition. That was your entry into the sport. So yeah, let's just talk talk about what you've learned about competition on your path. Yeah, um, I think that it is the most important thing uh, that you could do um, to, to grow, to grow and learn the most about yourself the fastest. So the reason that I compete, um, there's many, for many reasons, like I, I, I like, um, that it, it's the thing that helps me identify, um, areas that I need to work on, uh, the fastest. So, um, I go out there and I test my skills and, and I can look at, okay, what's working for me. And then I can take away very quickly, like, okay, these are the things that I need to work on. So it gives me direction and it helps give me focus. Um, but also it's, you know, it's, it's so different from rolling on the mats. Um, when you're rolling, like, yeah, you need that live work, but competition is that like on another level, the, the stress and the pressure and the anxiety that comes with preparing for a competition, being there on the day and stepping out on that mat and, and, and um, competing is, is something that you, you don't get through just rolling um, at the gym. Um, so I, I think that, you know, it's, it's that being under greater pressure and a greater anxiety and learning how to deal with my emotions and how to self-soothe and how to calm myself and how to stay focused and sh mentally sharp um, in high stress situations. Um, and, and then alongside that, it's, um, it's, you're, you're going to learn, you're going to learn fast through that. Cause just talking about like psychology, you know, like we don't forget the things, uh, that, that when we're in em environments that are creating those like emotions, like your brain, like holds on to that. So if you, whether, whether you do something um, like a good technique or a technique that like maybe wasn't as clean as it needed to be, or maybe you got caught in the match, like you're not gonna forget that. And most often it's not gonna happen again. And you're gonna go back and you're making the corrections. So it's, it's, it's kind of like, it's fuel, it's motivation. So you go out there and you compete and you get, uh, you collect data from that match and you're able to take it back in the gym and use that to, to work on whatever areas that need refining. We're talking about coming up against the stress, pressure, and anxiety of competition. What tools have you learned um, that help you overcome that? So what are some strategies um, that you do to overcome that stress, pressure, and anxiety that you feel on competition day? Yeah, so um, one of the things that I was told by one of my coaches, and I try and tell my athletes, is that um, it's nothing special. Um, so I think we, we put a lot of um, pressure on ourselves and we, we make a competition day and this match with this person um, so much more important and different from what we do every single day. So I tell myself that um, this is no different than any other role like at the gym um, and to trust in my training 
and I do very, uh, a lot of visualization um, about like being successful in my match. And I do a lot of like affirmations where, you know, I'm just like uh, self-belief, like, like trusting in my training and that I deserve to be here. And that, um, you know, I, I, one of the, the sayings I like to say is business as usual, because it helps me, you know, it helps me look at it like, all right, this is, it's no different from any other day. I'm going out here just like I do every day, like going on to the, the mats at the gym. And, um, and then I tell myself to have fun, like that I get to be here, like I get to be here doing something that I love. And, um, you know, there are people, not a lot of people can say that about their life and, and, and about their day that, that they get to live the life of their dreams and they get to go out and do something that they love um, on a platform where I can share that with, um, with other people. So I, I look at it from a place of gratitude and being excited and trying to turn it into that rather than uh, being nervous and anxious and putting pressure and anxiety on myself. So turning it into a positive thing rather than a, oh, I have to perform. It's like, no, I get to perform. Oh, nice. Heck yeah. I love that. I love that so much. This whole reframing of anxiety also, because so many of us, we feel this anxiety in our body and automatically the mind goes into what is that? And we start panicking or whatever reaction. Yeah. yeah, the value of that mind work, that focus, the affirmation. That's a, I, I appreciate that like trip inside your mind because mm -hmm. that's what I was wondering. I was like looking at your profile and everything you accomplished. I'm like, what goes on in somebody's mind at that level of so many eyes looking at you and the pressure we imagine on that we feel onto ourselves and yeah the I really get the value of putting in the rep on how to discipline your mind so that you can really um, approach these experiences with uh, a sense of balance and self-mastery um, level we're operating at that's super valuable thanks for sharing that i love that yeah. <laughs> and at the end of the day the outcome doesn't matter and that's mm -hmm. what i try to remember like winning and losing is is you know it only it's only like the value that we attach to it right um so and the meaning that we attach to it so like a win or a loss like in jiu-jitsu does not equate to like your your value or your worth and i feel like a lot of that pressure and anxiety that people place on themselves comes from that it's mm -hmm. like i i have to perform i have to do well or else like you know i'm worthless i'm i'm not worthy or you know i suck like but but really like man like jiu-jitsu comes down to inches it comes down to seconds too like you make you're, you're like a second off and uh, you can get caught. Like you make, you make like a one, one wrong move, a small opening and, and, and that, that can be it. Um, so like winning and losing doesn't necessarily say anything about your skill set. It doesn't say anything about, and especially it definitely does not say anything about you as an individual, you as a person. And, and, and that goes for anything in life. Like if, you know, you're, you know, you, you fail a test or, or whether it's like a written test or you don't get a job or you get fired or whatever. Like, I think that, and that's one of the things that jujitsu also helps me learn is to, to let go of these things and not place my, my worth in, in my achievements. And so then I can go out there and do these things and achieve things. If I achieve, you know, this, this reach this goal, it's like, oh, that's great. That's a bonus, but like really just enjoying the process, enjoying like the experience over thinking about the outcome. Mm -hmm. that's huge wisdom thank you for sharing that lord um along your journey you've met a lot of mentors and allies that have gifted you with some wisdom themselves so let's take a moment to acknowledge some of these mentors or allies that have helped you on your journey who were they uh, and what had what were the primary lessons that you've learned from them that you've incorporated into your being yeah absolutely um you're talking jujitsu or just like Any, overall? anything overall um okay well if we want to go far back um my grandfather um he 
uh, so grow, growing up riding horses, um, he taught me that um, you can't let them know you're afraid um, or else they're going to take advantage of you. And that's, that's as a horse, you know, so he taught me to be brave. Um, he taught me to face the things that I'm afraid of. Um, if I fall off, I, you know, I got to get back up. He was very like, you know, I get thrown off the horse and I'm crying and he's like, you're okay. Like, just get back on. Mm -hmm. And so he taught me, um, yeah, to, to go after the things that, uh, even if they scare me, cause I loved horses and he wasn't going to let me being afraid or getting thrown off, keep me from doing the thing that I love. So I, I think that at a young age, he instilled that in me. Um, and, and it's one of the things that helps me, uh, you know, today. Um, but uh, yeah, like my coaches along the way, like my coach, uh, Curtis, the owner of 10 planet, um, he's done, I can't say enough about him, man. He's, he's done so much, not only for me, but for so many people, so many people. He's, he's really like, he's the type of person that pulls people together and he builds communities and he creates opportunities for people. Um, and he sees potential in people. I think that, you know, when I came to the gym, I, 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 you know, I signed up and then like a couple months later, I told him I was going to have to freeze my membership because I was starting college and I wasn't able to work. And he, he just told me, he was like, don't worry about it. Just come to the gym and train. And if it weren't for him and how much he's done for me, um, you know, I wouldn't be where I am now. Like I wouldn't be as far along in jujitsu, um, as I am now. And, um, so he, and just outside of that, like, you know, he's done so much for me and, and many other people, he created the opportunity for me to start coaching. And, um, I told him I want to open up my own gym one day and he's behind me and he's going to support me in that. So, um, Curtis has done a lot for me. Um, all of the coaches at the gym have led me in some way and helped teach me. Um, and, uh, Gabe Tuttle, um, current head coach, I've been under him for, about two years now, um, Curtis moved to Alaska to be with some family um, about two years ago. And uh, when Gabe had moved here and he started um, taking over the, the lead coaching role and um, his style has really influenced mine. Like from the beginning, um, a lot of the things that he likes to do um, are also things that uh, techniques that I'm drawn to. I feel like his, his style matches with mine pretty well. Um, he's a big Mora player. I really like Morris. Um, and so, uh, yeah, he's, he's been a huge, um, uh, a huge help in, in leading and, and teaching me. Um, and then also my boyfriend, Jacob, um, Jacob, uh, and I were training partners for a year, um, before we started dating. He was one of my main training partners and, um, he's just in the same way, just through, um, helping me learn and helping me grow. Like he's built me up so much and not through just technique, which he has done so much. Like he's a big leg lock player. And so I, I say that most, you know, most of my leg uh, techniques have come from him. So I give that pretty much all to him. And, um, but also through like being a, a huge support and um, just helping me believe in myself um, because that was something I struggled with. Um, a lot like through competing and I went through a um, a really really difficult time in my life um three years ago it was the hardest year of my life and uh Curtis and everyone at the gym um supported me through all that and I don't know um yeah I don't I don't know where I would be without them in the gym um they've I, I it's funny because when I've been doing jujitsu for like a year and a half, two years, um, I'd always heard that the same circulating, like jujitsu saved my life. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, that's cute. It's, you know, kind of cheesy, but you know, it's cool. Um, and then I realized like two years ago after, after this, this year, um, that this difficult year that I had, um, and coming out of a really toxic, really, really, uh, um, bad relationship, I realized I was like, oh, jiu-jitsu did save my life and not just jiu-jitsu but like all the people in it in the community um and it was yeah it was uh it was it was a I don't know it was very very impactful for me um and to realize that 
but yeah, so uh, not just like my head coaches, but everybody in the gym, all of my training partners, everybody is, is, uh, has played a huge role in helping me get to where I am today. Um, through whether their mentorship, they're, 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 uh, teaching me something or being there as a support, uh, system. Um, yeah, I, there's, there's too many people to name, but there's, those are the, those are my head coaches there <laughs> that play the largest role. Mm, beautiful. Um, it's incredible how jujitsu has helped you in so many ways and it's helped you overcome a great tragedy that you experienced three years ago. Um, and it's also helped you with various other obstacles in life, including injuries that you've alluded to. Let's talk about what you've learned um, about recovering from injuries um, and how, how you can come back from injury and come back to jujitsu because that's a big theme in jujitsu is getting injured. Right now, my knee is injured. And I was on crutches um, just a couple of days ago. Um, so yeah, what have you learned about overcoming injury in jujitsu? Oh man, I'm experienced here. <laughs> I've had so many injuries. Um, you know, I told you that like I had some injuries that happened like a couple weeks into jujitsu and those weren't necessarily jujitsu related. Like I think one of them happened while I was rolling, but I also like, it was because I wasn't properly taking care of my body beforehand and I was so mm -hmm. tight and I was just going way too hard. Um, but yeah, so, um, I went to physical therapy school. That's what I went to college for. So, um, that in itself helps a lot with understanding injuries in my body and how to rehab them when they happen. But, um, preventatively, um, I've learned over time that it's more important, um, to, to, um, play safer than play harder, um, to be more technical. Um, and, and this is just, you know, jujitsu, you know, of course, like it's, it's more about like the technique than it is strength. And it's, it's a learning curve for people to be able to like, um, be more technical versus relying on their size or their strength, but, um, being smarter with choosing my roles. I was the type of person that like, it used to never say no to anybody. Um, and that was just me in general about anything. I was just a very yes person. I was like, Oh, you want to, you know, somebody wants to go do some crazy adventure experience. I'm like, yes, like I will, I will do that. And then, you know, in jujitsu, it was like anybody who asked me to roll, I said, yes. So I had to get more, um, smart about like who I rolled with, um, rolling with people who weren't twice my size, um, rolling with people who, weren't brand new. Like I'll roll with new, I will roll with new people if they're like women or smaller. So it's not like I, I don't ever, but on a consistent basis. And especially if they're way bigger than me, if they're way bigger and they're brand new, like I'm, I'm not going to roll with them. Um, because I, it's just too much of a risk for me to get injured. Um, but, um, and then listening to my body better, like knowing when I've been going really, really hard and there's a difference between, um, just not feeling like going into train because you're sleepy or you're tired or whatever. And then there's a difference when your body is like yelling at you that like it, it you feel like you're going to pass out or you feel like something's going to tear on the verge of tearing. So giving myself like those rest days and making rehab and preventative um, measures more important than just training, 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 training. Um, so I, uh, I do a lot of, uh, if I can, I, I'll get like one massage a week. Um, um, usually it equates to like twice a month, um, but um, massages, um, eating healthy, nutrition is huge. Nutrition and sleep are the two like simplest and most important things that you can do for keeping your body healthy, that and hydration. So there's three, sleep, just nutrition overall and hydration. So reducing inflammation, um, giving your body enough sleep, uh, time to actually like recover and heal and, and hydrating your body. Like I've had injuries that have happened just because I'm dehydrated. Um, I had an injury happen right after Nogi worlds. I went out to Costa Rica for a training camp and, um, I had, I had dehydrated a little bit for worlds. And I think that like, I, I wasn't intentionally dehydrated because it was like two or three days afterwards, but I wasn't intentionally hydrating. And so when 
I went, I had been at the event like all day, like the two days after I had already competed and then on a plane, like all day long, you know, at different elevation levels, it, it affects like hydration as well. And so I went out the first day of the training camp and I tore my meniscus just like in a position that was like, had, it wasn't, I wasn't in a submission. Like it was just me positionally, um, just figure four in my leg and it just, yeah. And my meniscus just popped. So, um, being really mindful of hydration and nutrition and getting adequate sleep are really big in helping prevent injuries. But if you do get injured, it's also, it doesn't mean that you have to be completely off of the mats. Um, staying like mentally sharp, like watching instructional videos, coming into class and watching, and then even helping teach. Like when I've been injured, um, I'll go into the gym and I'll take class, but I'll just walk around and help people. And so before I was ever even coaching officially, I would do that when I was injured, I would come in and whatever is being taught, like I go and help the new people. Um, and then that gave me like the mental reps. Um, it helped me learn the technique. I'm there watching it and helping people helping people through it. And then when you start to come back to training, um, you know, you just start drilling lightly and being aware of like, okay, well, what's injured and what direction and what positions can I can and can't I do? And so when I come back from, when I'm coming back from an injury, which I actually just came back from one, I, um, an, an ankle, like I rolled my ankle, um, pretty bad, like two months ago. And it also wasn't like in a submission. I was like walking and the joint in my left foot is, is been messed up for about 10 years. So I can't really like push off of it very well. So I went to, and I've been working on it in physical therapy, so it's been getting better. So I think my body was just like, all right, we're ready to do this. And I like stepped to pivot and my foot just like, it just wouldn't go. And so it just like collapsed. And I got like a grade two tear in two of my ligaments, um, on that ankle. So like in coming back, um, first, you know, the first step was just like rolling. I make sure I tape my ankle every single time I come in and then choosing good training partners as well. Like people that are smaller that I trust and that, um, I know like are, are just going to be technical with me. Um, and you know, just going easy and, and it's better to err on the side of like caution and come back a little slower than to come back too fast because I've made that mistake before as well, where I've had an injury that's healing. I'm coming back in training and I'm like, Oh, you know, it's not hurting. I don't feel anything. I think I'm good to like pick up the pace and go faster. And then something happens where it just, it re-injures it again. So, um, I don't know. I, I, does that answer your question? <laughs> like I just kind of went yeah. off on a bunch of different. No, no, that's, 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 that's excellent. And then it, it, in, inspires me to ask this next question you talked about being a good training partner a few times how do you be a good training partner for those listening what makes a good training partner yeah just somebody uh really i think one of the things that gets in the way in jiu-jitsu a lot is our ego so if you can leave that at the door and um when you come in and you're rolling um not try and go 100 percent um because we're all there to learn um we're not there to compete like competing is for the competition right um, and of course, like, you know, we're going to have those days and those, those people that we roll with that we're a little more competitive with. And, but, you know, we make that agreement, like before we roll, or, you know, like you, you learn to know, like, you know, how hard someone's going, you can feel like their energy, but, um, when it comes to like in, in drilling, um, trying to, um, not resist so much. Um, I mean, and that goes into rolling as well. Like you, you don't want to be so like stiff and, and resistant. Um, it's more about going with the flow. Um, and, um, and also I think one, one of the things that's, um, really valuable is communicating very clearly. Um, so like if you have an injury, um, like even if you've rolled with that person a couple of times and they, you told them, um, I have. Oh, Hey, not ankle, you know, no heel hooks today. Um, you have to repeat that. You can't just expect someone to like, remember those things and then communicating like what kind of role you want at the beginning of the role. Like if, and, and if during the role, the role is a little too intense for you being able to communicate like, Hey, um, let's dial it back a little bit. I, I, I want to flow a little bit more. 
Um, but like approaching each, if we're talking about rolling each role, uh, communicating like what kind of role that, that you would like that to be. And then that gives that person the opportunity to say like, you know, um, okay, well maybe, maybe you want to flow and they're like, oh, I have a competition coming up. Like, um, you know, let's get the next one or something, or, or maybe uh, you say you want a hard roll. And then that gives them the opportunity to say, Hey, like, you know, actually I, I need to just like go a little lighter today. Um, but yeah, I think communication is key. Um, not, not being so competitive, um, in your roles and treating it more like we're, we're learning here. Um, and, and if you are somebody who is going with somebody who you're like, you're, you're dominating all the positions, maybe you've submitted them a couple of times, um, maybe kind of dialing that back a little bit so that it allows that person to work as well. Um, it's, you know, it's valuable to be able to, to work on your defense. Um, but you know, not just like completely like coming in and, and overpowering someone and, and beating them up basically. Um, that's something like I try to do, like I have certain training partners that like, okay, all right, if we're going hard today. You try and rip my head off. That's cool. <laughs> but, um, those are very specific training partners that like, you know, we're also not going to like rip on a submission. And that's something too, that people, um, that'll happen like early on and how injuries can happen if you get in on submission and you're just trying to like blast through it. Um, so being very like mindful with like control first. So what I like to do, if I get say an arm bar on somebody, I, I finish on like a three or a five count. Um, so if I get the, the arm, I'm going one, two, three for my finish, sometimes a five count. If it's somebody who's like really new and one that gives me the opportunity to make sure that, oh, I'm more controlled in this position. Um, and then two, it allows the other person to have an opportunity to start working their defense. And so back to what I was saying before, like if you roll with someone, you've submitted them a couple of times. What I'll usually do is if I get to a submission position, I'll like get there and then I'll allow them to escape out of it, work their escape. And then I'll work on transitioning to something as they're escaping. So it's not like I'm just completely letting, you know, giving up my, my reps and just getting, giving them unrealistic reps because I might give them, you know, um, where I submit them a, like once or twice, but then they get to work on their defense and I get to work on connecting to something outside of that. Or then maybe I let them be more offensive and then I get to work my defense. So just overall, just treating it like a learning experience and um, leaving ego at the door, trying to, um, trying to communicate with your partners better and um, make sure that um, everybody's learning something. Mm -hmm. Beautifully mm -hmm. said. Um, at, another thing I talked to you prior to this call was just about my um, new that I've just been kicking into, and that's um, teaching. Uh, my passion for teaching youth and children. I have a new program at Dave's Gym here in Winnipeg, Manitoba, where I'm teaching children age 7 to 14, um, and I'm really, really enjoying it. What advice would you have to my students or for kids starting in jujitsu or kids interesting in this sport? What advice did I have? Um, entering into the sport. Uh, and just have fun. I think that that's my advice for everyone. Um, but yeah, like have fun and be open. Um, and um, yeah, like don't, don't, don't make it kind of the same as what I was saying before. Like, don't make it a competition. Like you want to be competitive with yourself. You always want to push yourself, um, to, to be growing and improving, but you know, um, not every role is a competition. Um, and don't get frustrated with yourself when you're not getting it. Like, like it, this is something that's going to take a lifetime, um, to work on, to get really good at. And I think sometimes, uh, kids and adults alone can get impatient and they can get frustrated with themselves. I still get frustrated with myself sometimes. Um, I did just the other day. I was trying to, I was working on a technique. I was like, ah, oh, I'm not getting it. But, um, you know, like that's, that's one of the things that's most exciting about the sport. You know, it's not, it's not easy and you really have to work at it. And so when you overcome those things, it's going to be that much more meaningful. 
Um, so just be patient with yourself, be gracious with yourself and uh, just have fun in, in the process and in learning and uh, just stay committed and consistent. And that's what's gonna get you there. Um, that's, it's, it's, not, it's not a sprint. This, this sport and this game is a marathon. So as long as you keep showing up and you keep putting in the work and you keep putting in the time, you're gonna learn it, you're gonna get there and um, you're gonna learn a lot more along the way than just, just the sport and the, of jujitsu. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Yeah. Wise yeah. words. Um, to close every conversation, we ask every guest these final three questions and we're at that point. And the first one is a big one. And that is through all, through it all, through the highs and lows that is this life journey. What has been the greatest life lesson you've learned on your path? And this is not just jujitsu. This is life lesson period um, that you feel called to share with us at this moment. Um, the first thing that comes to mind is let go and flow. Um, I, I had this tattoo that I've wanted to get for a while um, of an isosahedron. It's a, um, it's the sacred geometrical symbol for water. And um, it means to go with the flow of life. Um, so we have, we place all of these expectations on ourselves and our job and our life, our families. Um, and it makes us, uh, it's, it's really heavy. And it oftentimes makes us feel um, inadequate and not worthy. And it could, creates resistance within ourselves and within our life. And I've learned that the more that we can let go of uh, those expectations um, that we place upon ourselves, the happier we can be. And the more things just kind of fall into place, the more life just seems to just naturally flow and to happen. And um, when you can let go of your attachments to whatever you think that your life should be, whatever you think it should look like, whoever you think that you should be, um, it, it, it brings more peace into your life. So, and, and sometimes things turn out far better than you ever could have imagined. So what I think that I'm supposed to be or who I think I'm supposed to be, the life that I think that I'm supposed to live, that is oftentimes based on what I've been conditioned to believe about life and about myself and, and what is what society tells me uh, the kind of person in life that I should, my life should look like. Um, is often uh, very different from what I'm truly called, from what you're truly called uh, to be. So, um, and like, I've had a lot of, uh, I've gone through a lot of uh, difficult times in my life early on and, um, not, and not so long ago. And I've learned that you can't control life and you can't control the outcome. So letting go of those expectations, learning to flow with, with whatever life comes and just enjoy and be grateful for the good things that you have and the people that are in your life, like while you have them, because they may not be here forever. So enjoy and, and soak everything in and um, just be grateful um, and enjoy life, let go and flow. Mm -hmm. That's gold, that's gold. In three words, how would you describe the experience you are having in this earth? Doesn't have to be a sentence, just three words that resonate with you that describe the experience you are having on this earth. On this earth. Um, three words that describe the experience. Surreal, sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, uh, <laughs> Um, enlightened and uh, impassioned. The real, aligned, enlightened. And impassioned. Enlightened? Yeah. Okay. Surreal, enlightened, and impassioned. What a life. Yeah. We spent a lot of time examining your past, tracing the beginning of your hero's journey. And let's take a moment and let's fast forward. Let's move into the future and let's transform into 
a space and time where we're sitting alongside an 85 year old Lauren Sears. Who is this 85 year old woman? Where are you? Who are you surrounded by? And what is the legacy that you've left behind on your time and your 85 years on earth? Um, I hope that I'm still around and that I'm doing jujitsu. Um, <laughs> by then I'll have, uh, had uh, opened my own gym and it will have been around for a very long time and um, led and helped lead and inspire and build um, uh, women in this sport specifically, um, but all, all people, all individuals, but specifically I, I feel drawn to help um, support and build up women um, in this sport and, and in life. And um, I uh, be surrounded by hopefully all the people that are in my life now that I love and that support me. And um, we will just be elevated versions of ourselves um, having, and I don't know exactly what that person looks like, but um, I know that uh, uh, she's gonna be um, a much more developed person than I am now and wiser and, uh, you know, I hope that that person has uh, helped other people live better lives. Um, uh, that's my my ultimate goal and mission is to just be happy uh, with the process of my life and along the way help other people do the same. Beautiful. Incredible. It's happening. It's in process. Let's stay with this 85-year-old Lauren for one moment longer. And I'm going to bring us back to the now, the current day. I want you to feel into that 85-year-old Lauren's soul. And she leaves us. She leaves us with a message. What does that 85-year-old Lauren whisper to the present day, Lauren? Hmm. Um, you did it. Everything was okay. <laughs> I don't know. Beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. You did it. And everything is okay. Thank you so much, Lauren. We're really grateful for your time. And I'm so happy that you joined us to share some of your story. It's so inspiring. And I know many will be inspired by listening um, mm -hmm. along. Bianca, some closing words for you on this conversation. I feel the same way. I feel like you shared so much wisdom with us. And to just have a little glimpse of what it's like to be in the mind of an athlete of your caliber, but just to see that you're also learning along the way. And I'm just really grateful you shared space and you shared yourself with us today. Uh, you're a beautiful being and uh, you're glowing. And I'm really <laughs> grateful that you connected with us. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So for anyone wanting to follow along with your journey, they can connect with you on Instagram at Lauren Sears 10P. Anywhere else that they can find you? Um, that's it for now on Instagram, Lauren Sears 10P. Maybe eventually I'll create my own website and share some techniques on there, but that's it for now. Yeah. And if they want to train with you? Uh, 10 Planet Austin. Right on. It's beautiful. To close every conversation, we bring our fist in for digital fist bump, a choice to step into the winner's circle. Boom. Thank you so much, Lauren. It's been a pleasure. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Signing out. <laughs>